I have something. Be me last summer. Be wanting to complete stalker challenge. Abandoned cement barge beached on a sandbar on wooded coastline seems like the perfect place to camp. Brought a WSR, two magazines, all the magazines I had at the time, was poor dude. Went to check out this barge, it was pretty sick. There were barnacles growing on some of it, so I assumed that, at high tide, it was partially submerged. It had a cargo hold, and an upper deck. There were two portholes in the upper deck, with rusty ladders that descended down into the cargo hold. Decided to camp on the beach where the sandbar connects with dry land because I didn't want to drown in my sleeping bag if high tide completely covered the vessel somehow. Explored the barge just a little more first. Noticed some rusted out metal stuff in a little square pool on the upper deck. Reached down into the water, pulled out a rifle casing. Recognized it as a nugget food casing. Wait till slash K slash hears about this. Finally get finished closely examining all the cool old rusted bits of the barge. Valves, moorings, etc. Head over to the beach to make camp. Paste it off. It's 60 or so yards from the barge. Not quite stalker challenge legal, but safety first, right? What's 10 yards? Mac. Make a little fire pit with rocks for shiggles. Put driftwood in it. Knit. Whipped out the Zippo. Lit her UPI looked at my watch. It was about four. Pick related kind of shows the shoreline I was camped on. Pick related also shows the part of the upper deck where the barge was split in two. Anyhow, sitting on the beach in front of weak ass fire. WSR laying by my side. Pull out a green plastic dollar store harmonica. No idea how to play it. Just make noises with it. Start doing the Jaws theme with it, for shiggles. Laugh my own cleverness. Try to do something like the national anthem. Hear laughter coming from the trees. Stop playing, look over. Hello? Laughter continues, same tone as before. It kind of sounds like me, come to think of it. Begin to smell something kind of metallic. Smell is kind of salty, too. I was camped by the sound, mind you. So it was already a little salty, but this smell was salter than normal. It's still only five, not quite sundown. I'm scanning the tree lean, but I don't see nothing. Reach for my harmonica to resume playing. Realize the salty, metallic smell kind of resembles blood. In fact, it strongly resembles the smell of blood. Same laugh comes from the woods. Begin to put two and two together. Chamber around in the WSR. Hello? Sit there, staring at the woods for a long as time. Nothing. Cook my beans on the fire, glancing over at the woods periodically. Just as the sun is going down here. Hello? Come at me from the woods. That sounds a lot like me. In OPBTCFUCKOUTOFTCHRE.JPEG. Pack my shit in a flash, ran to the barge. Anyways, darted to the barge, left inside, pick related was taken two weeks prior, while hiking with a buddy. We spent all of five minutes there, and continued on our way, frantically climbed up onto upper deck, jumped across the crack onto the bow, went prone, aimed my WSR back out across the sandbar, eyes golf ball wide, sit like that a while, periodically check watch. Just as the sun is finishing setting, realize I'm going to want some fire. Down onto the sandbar, rifle slung and at the ready, gather up a little driftwood. Light a rather weak fire on the deck. Make one last trip just at the beginning of dusk. Find some good wood. Fire a cheese respectable size. The first few hours of the night, rifle shouldered, prone, aiming down the sandbar. Spend a T. Remember that several of my relatives suffer various mental illnesses. You probably just hallucinated the SH asterisk T. Anon, you need to go get checked out. I tell myself. Then I hear the heavy breaking of brush from the coastline. And something muffled blows to me on the breeze. 
laughter, and a pretty unpleasant smell. Oh shit. Hold my Rafa tight, pointed threateningly at the coast. It's pretty well dark by now. Remember I brought a flashlight. Go over to my pack, laying on the deck by the stern, get it. Come back, shine it down along the sandbar. See something glint as I sweep. Swing beam back onto the gleaming thing. Two little dots. Eyes. Fucking eyes. Something big and dark is attached to them. It's pretty damn tall. It's just standing there, halfway down the sandbar. Can't see it well, low battery, and it was kind of far away con it. Try to tell myself it's just an animal. That's one biggest animal. Is it a bear? Human eyes don't glow in the dark, so it can't be a person. Can't hurt. To shoot at it, right? Chamber round. A live round is ejected and skitters across the deck. I already chambered one on the beach. I'm a dumbass. Go prone, take aim, touch one off. If only I had had a flash hider instead of a slanted break. Blinded for what felt like an eternity. Blinking frantically in hopes of restoring my sight the whole time. Get to the point where I can see again. Maybe I scared it off. Frantically shine my mag light all up and down the sandbar. No eyes. Hear the crunching of gravelly sand below me. Somebody says, Hello? Once again, it sounds a hell of a lot like me. In full panic mode. Stand on the railing, point WSR over the side, mag dump. FE. Hear and see nothing for a good long while. Settle in. Got my legs in a sleeping bag, head, and arms out with what WSR aimed at the portholes that lead from the hold up onto the deck. A couple of hours pass, my eyelids get heavy. Hear that laugh again, this time, it's below me. Nearly wet myself in sheer terror. Begin focusing intently. Hear small waves lapping up against the side of the barge. The tide has risen. Something's walking around down there, and it's beginning to fill with water. After 10 minutes or so, begin to hear slashing in the hole below. There's only one direction this can go now. Up. Oh shit a shit oh shit oh heat. Hello? Scream. Shut the fuck up. Shove my WSR down the porthole. Blind fire like a madman. There goes all of my ammo. Heart is hammering. Slowly back away from the porthole. Unsheathe my bayonet. Heart something clanging against metal. It's climbing the ladder. I don't know how that thing fit through the porthole, but it did. Fight or flight engages. There's nowhere to run to. Charge, screaming. It happened in a flash. The bayonet plunged I eye into the thing. A heavy paw, or something, bitch slapped me across the chest and I went tumbling off the barge, into the drink. I now have no WSR, and I'm in the water. Play dead, lay on my back, hope it doesn't see me. Heart is pounding uncontrollably, still. Not worried about hypothermia because it's June. Slowly drift away with the current. See a hulking silhouette next to the fire as I drift off. Currently dumps me on a beach a few miles east. Hike home. Never go near that place again. I used to work in the gas industry as a geologist. From 2007 to 2009, I was in contrast with a Russian company called North Gas, back when industrial relations with the UK were still fairly cordial. There were lots of potential gas sites in this Siberian region far up north, and I used to go around potential sites with company borehole engineers, usually in groups of two to three. Anyway, I was at one site in northern Siberia with a German engineer in late October of 2008. Took ages to get to and completely devoid of human habitation, but really beautiful taiga. Endless forests on the drive up there. You drove a van through taiga? Yeah. I'm not a car nut, but it was some modified jeep that the engineer guy would just not shut the fuck up about all the way from Neuebursk. Anyway, the site we went to survey was fairly typical of what you expect in the industry at these sorts of locations, 
thin topsoil giving way to permeable siltstone, excellent locations for surveying. Now to the story. We came to a location where satellite imagery was suggesting that permafrost was retreating. It still fucking snows and ice is over, of course, but the key point is, is that it's not entirely frozen over. You can install stuff during the summer months, get gas production up. It was a pretty boring landscape though, very thin topsoil giving way rapidly to permeable siltstone. Lots of these natural holes all over the place too, permafrost plugs that had melted and left 20 to 30 m deep holes dotted all over the place. We decided to stay a few weeks and do some test surveys. First week was completely fine, got some good locations, and things progressed smoothly. By the end of that week though, things were getting a little weird. Every time I would go out with the spectrometer after that first week, I'd occasionally hear some noises from the holes. I was never near them, because while you get a lot of gas coming off these things, they're not terribly good for industrial drilling. It was faint, just on the border of hearing. I never knew how to describe those noises until a few years later when someone took me out to a jazz bar and some guy was playing a violin-like instrument that made this drone noise, like a fume. Disconcerting, makes your hair stand up. My colleague would notice this too. Disconcerting, as in this job, you're not really working together, but apart. So two of us were hearing stuff out there. We were both rational people, at the time for me, at least, so we put it down to cave noises. Laugh, forget it. About ten days into this survey, it started happening at night. Again, faint, but really ominous. That drone noise. We used to sleep in the back of the van we had brought, but even through those doors we heard it. Again, stop being stupid, it's cave noises, laugh, have a few beers, go to sleep. It got worse from there. The day after, I found some slime stuff around one of the permafrost boreholes. Yeah, you get lichens and mosses around these things, not an issue, but this was like petroleum jelly, that really viscous stuff. I touched it and immediately regretted it, it felt a lot like pork belly fat. It was warm too, which was really disturbing, considering it was minus 5, Celsius, for you Amerifags, during the day out there. Bring round the German engineer to take a look, he looks troubled. For the rest of the day I was constantly on edge too. I kept looking back at the borehole too, just to check, I kept saying to myself. Things got worse at night. That drone noise got a lot worse, but it felt, and I know that's a shit way of putting it, like it wasn't from below, but above, on the surface. My German engineer tried to laugh it off, but I could tell he was seriously disturbed by it. Just that low fume. Eventually we get to sleep. God knows how many hours later though, we woke up together because there was definitely something attempting to open the door handle to the passenger seat of the van. Click click click. And now that drone is right fucking outside, and it sounds a lot like gurgling. At this point we both freak the fuck out and scream like a pair of little girls. It stops. We don't sleep for the rest of the night, and it doesn't come back. Next day, as soon as we make it to 9am, we cautiously open the doors. The entire back door is covered in this pork fat shit. The place reeks of something rotten too. Passenger door just smeared on that stuff. But the thing that made us immediately go, fuck it, we're leaving, was the passenger window, which was also smeared in this gunk, had an outline on it, like something had pressed its skull into the fat stuff and left an outline. It was unmistakably an elongated human skull, with no eye orbitals. Jelly stuff was all over the area around us too, and of fucking course, lead all the way to that borehole. We got out of there very fast after that, but as we were packing that drone shit started again from that hole, and it was loud. It was guttural by this point, whatever the shit was making it was down there and close too. German guy went pretty nuts after that. Just hopped in, immediately started going, equipment that was still out for methane measurements just left. Didn't stop driving for the next 14 hours. I pretty much ditched my job soon after. I had no desire to be left like that again in the middle of places like that. 
German guy, never heard from again. He never talked about it to me anyway. Nice story. Thanks for posting. Thanks, I suppose. I guess distance from that event makes it sound pretty prosaic. Spooky noises, oh, slime, oh woo. During that night though I was convinced I was going to die. You know how you can just know when someone or something like an animal is nice, curious, or is just out to fuck you up. I knew instinctively that whatever wanted and didn't want to crack open a beer and ask us about geology if you get my drift. Anyway, I spent a long time after I had calmed down about it, which took a few months, in fact, to think of a rational reason for this. Every time though, I kept butting up against the unexplainable. Sure, drones could be cave noises, but the warm slime stuff. The guttural noise. Around 2012 I got a lot into reading about frozen mammoths and the worry about viruses from the taiga that they were expecting because of climate change, and at that point I went full slash x slash and said, fuck it, frozen monster. Used to go visit grandpa up outside of Bozeman in the winters. Grandpa is this tiny little, frail old man, but he's hardy as fuck. He used to take us snowshoeing up in the mountains and carry most of the gear in this sled he pulled behind him. It was fucking cold up there, your snot would be frozen before it left your nose. The times he did convince us to go out, we ended up staying in ice caves that grandpa had carved into snow banks earlier in the winter. It got dark really early, and of course no campfires because ice and snow everywhere. One year we're out there camping with grandpa and he's really on edge the whole trip. Don't ask him why because we are stupid kids and don't think it matters. Random outbursts, yelling at us for not tying a knot right. Yelling at us for not keeping up with his insane pace. Stops hiking at about 2 p.m. nightfall isn't for another three and a half hours. Me and brother exchange, WTF, looks with each other. Look around for his ice cave. There isn't one. Hey grandpa, where are we camping? Grandpa is nowhere to be found. Can't find his footprints, which is strange because snowshoes leave enormous footprints that you can't miss. Backtrack and refollow the trail to where we were earlier. Footprints just fucking end right where me and my brother were when Grandpa told us to stop for the day. Suddenly hear voice. After a lot of deliberation, we decide to head back, following our tracks back to the main road, where we will somehow flag down a car and get help to find our Grandpa. We hike about an hour back the way we came. Where the hell have you kids been? It's grandpa and his pissed. Says he was hiking along and all next time he turned around, we weren't there. Says our footprints just ended about 100 paces back from wherever he was when he realized we were gone. We tell him something similar happened to us and we just got back from two miles ahead of us on the trail. Suddenly, he goes into wild animal hyper alert mode. Stops talking. By scanning forest around us, head pivoting side to side, trying to see everywhere at once. Get freaked out and brother starts crying. Grandpa won't respond when we ask him what's wrong, quietly muttering incoherently to himself. After what seems like forever, Grandpa starts moving again. Simply says, follow me, and we do. Too scared to argue, but he's going in a third direction, i.e. not where we came from and not where we were originally headed. We are all hiking close together, literally stepping on each other's feet, can't hold hands because of ski poles, but we would have if we could have. Eventually emerge in a clearing. I recognize it as a lake, but you'd never know it in the winter when everything is frozen solid. We get out on the ice and walk all the way to the middle of the lake before we stop. Grandpa tells us to get out our parkas, as we're going to be staying a while. Ask him what's happening. Doesn't answer. He gets out our binoculars and starts to scan the shoreline. This is a pretty huge lake, so without binoculars, neither me or my brother could really see anything besides little distant trees on the shore at this grandpa puts the binoculars down, unpacks a fairly large caliber revolver and holster and puts it on his hit point. He then picks the binoculars up and points them in the same direction he was looking a minute ago. Me and my brother both look in that direction. I can barely see something moving around. No, a couple things, all of various sizes. 
They all hanging on the bank though, none of them leave the thick brush surrounding the lake, or venture onto the ice. After a few minutes, Grandpa silently hands me the binoculars. When I look at the movement on the shore, I almost shit my pants. There are three animals. Two are what I can only assume are wolves. Maybe coyotes, but I don't think so, the bodies are just too long, almost snake-like. The third animal is some sort of all-white thing standing on two legs. The more I look at it, the stranger it seems. At first I took it to be a bear, just standing there on its hind legs. Then it starts walking, pacing around really, and the legs are just too long and slender to be a bear's. I sit down on the ice, lean up against my backpack, and get a more steady grip on the binoculars. Slowly realize that whatever it is has the approximate build of a human, but the head is clearly not a human head, some sort of animal, I can't place it. Ask grandpa what the hell I'm looking at there. Brother snatches Binnix away and when he sees it, he labels it, bear man, and wants to take a few shots at it. Grandpa says Indians used to dress up in animal furs in order to blend in with the animals they were hunting. Slightly stop shitting myself. It's just an Indian in a bearskin. And he has two dogs that look like wolves. And they are following us, but are afraid of ice. Start shitting my pants all over again as I realized that this is about a hundred times weirder than a real bear man. It's starting to get dark, and we're still out there on the ice. We're all watching the Indian, bear man, whatever the fuck it is, and his dogs, all slowly wandering along the coastline, clearly avoiding the ice, but clearly trying to get out onto it somehow. Every once in a while, they'll change direction, as though they were pacing back and forth. In the time I have the binoculars, I see the thing, and his dogs, walls motionless and staring directly at us many times. No one breaks the silence for a long time. When it gets too dark to see anything on the shore, Grandpa relaxes, puts down the binoculars, and actually starts to make camp as though nothing had happened. Of course we don't have a tent, but we do have sleeping bags, and bivy bags to keep the blowing snow off of them, and the wind off our faces me and my brother look at him like he's crazy. We're going to sleep out here. I say something like what he about the guy holy shit is right over there. Doesn't matter, we spend a long night in that exact spot. Next morning, we can't locate any animals or bear men after 45 minutes of scanning the trees around the lake. Grandpa deems it safe enough to head back by now, and since he knows these woods so well, we take a different route back to the main road than we took to get there. After one mile, he's doubling back, staring at mountain tops and measuring angles between them with his arms, and I'm convinced he's lost. In the next moment, several things happen all at once. With no warning, a huge moose gallops out of seemingly thin air and almost crushes my brother, managing to push him on the ground Grandpa collapses for an unknown reason. The three of us form a triangle and in the middle is an slender person covered in all white fur, like a polar bear, and with a bear head, or maybe a mask, but it looked pretty damn lifelike. The two wolves, I'm sure they are wolves now, are circling at a distance, or rather, one is circling, I don't see the other. Bear man lets loose a scream like you imagine Bigfoot might make when caught in a bear trap. Grandpa half sits up, points revolver, and fires off three shots at the thing in rapid succession. Huge puff of snow like a silent explosion and can't see anything for a few seconds. Now a second moose goes hurtling through and after it's gone and the snow has settled down the bear man is gone too. No traces of blood to be found. Can still see the one wolf, pretty far away, but it's still circling. We proceed to book it out of the woods, taking the shortest and most direct route off the mountain. Think that grandpa isn't really sure about where he's going, but nobody gives a shit, we have to keep moving. Still think I see the wolf out at the edge of my vision, several hundred feet out through the trees, or maybe it's both of them. We eventually do get back to grandpa's car, turns out he didn't know where he was going. It's been covered in fresh snowfall since we left it there. There's 10 inch paw prints all the fuck over it and around it. Nope nope. We clean off the snow and see that there are dents in the hood, like hail fell on it, but they're right under where the paw prints were. Nope dot r dot gz dot biz dot nope. On the drive home, we all swear to never speak of this to grandma or to my mom. Have to swerve out of the way of a huge roadkill. Almost drive off the road. 
Stop just in time. The thing in the road is a huge mound of fur with no distinct animal-like forms. No head, no legs, no tail. Blood everywhere. Looks like a giant skin thrown over a giant mound of flesh. It moves. Nope, 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 nope. Grandpa peels the fuck out, drives home 30 miles per hour over the speed limit, and we never look back. End. Scariest experience of my owners. Be me alone camping in woods. Been there a few weeks. Sun is going down. I have approximate 1.5 hours or so. Not quite 2 to 3, but over an hour. See three guys crouching around the woods, 250 and across the river. I naturally crouch and watch, reach for binoculars and sit very still. They seem to be hunting deer. No firearms visible, but one does have a buck knife. I am spooked at this point, mind racing. I think about what I should do. Run, contact, stay still. I am miles into the wild at this point. Plus my belongings are all set up in a concealed slash camo cap, and I can't just leave it all here to head blindly into the woods this late. My gut is telling me that they are not friendly. I don't know why, but I just feel like if I speak with them it will not go well at all. I decide to stay on my spot and watch. They have come to the river now, slightly closer, but there is no way they could see my camp as it was uphill in a strange spot, hidden between brush and trees. The land is shaped in such a way that you would have to be right on me to see me. It's getting dark now. They still are not using the light and are moving slow slash looking around a lot. They split into three and I lose sight of one. But he walked away from me whilst the other two crossed the river and split. One is going the opposite direction. One is heading towards me. One is heading down river. I slowly move behind some brush and back off another 100 m or so. Lie down and continue watching. My stomach drops. I found you bitch these are our woods. The one that was heading closer has found my camp. This is when I confirm that they are looking for me. I don't know why or how I have done nothing to warrant this. Didn't even know the land was owned. It was so remote. No dead animals, no trash, no wildfires, etc. I can hear my things being thrown around now, and a pretty loud conversation as they all have regrouped in my camp. Can't understand them, but they seem to be angry, occasional screaming and such into the woods around them. Saying things like, we know you're here boy, you're done, and other than sticks in my mind is, I'm gonna have fun skinning you. I lie still in terror. About 30 minutes pass, but it could have been more slash less. It's hard to tell at this point. It's getting really dark now, and I see them heading back down hell and still hear them shouting in the distance. I lay still in the woods for another 20 to 30 minutes and thank god I did. Not sure how much longer I would have lay there, but I wasn't eager to move since I knew that they knew where my camp was, but I didn't know where they were. A fucking flashlight turns on at my camp. If you're out here, you should call yourself lucky from now on. Don't ever come back here, boy. Deal.jpg I lay and watch the flashlight go into the distance. It's pitch black now, so I give it another 20 minutes in case it was some kind of double trap. Nothing but silence. After a while I hear gunshots a few miles away, across the river where they headed earlier. At this point, I just slowly approached my camp, gathered my gear as best as I could in speed. Much was lost forever into the woods or possibly stolen, likely both. My tent is slashed apart, my sleeping bag sliced into bits with the insulation thrown around camp. My tarp has been pulled out of the tree and slashed up, cords cut. Gunshots again, but they are much closer this time. I grab what I can and haul us uphill. Spend the entire night moving north through the woods until I finally found the service road to follow. Followed it in the tree line just in case and was freaking out the entire night. Never went back to those woods. This took place in the southern remote US. Still don't know what they wanted or how they found me or knew where I was. My guess is trail cams, but that they found my camp earlier and came back looking for it as a group to teach me a lesson or worse. What's a trail cam? Cool story. Hunting cameras set up that look like trees or are fastened to trees. They are often obvious, but the woods are so vast that I could very easily walk right by one multiple times, triggering it to record me which would then alert them that there is a man in the area. I believe they attract me somehow, or recorded me with hidden tech and were looking for my camp. Either that, or they stumbled upon my camp earlier in the day, and came back for me at night time, when they thought I would be at camp or asleep in the tent, which they were correct about. Luckily, I wasn't sitting by a fire cooking, or resting in my tent, and was wandering the vicinity, scouting the land and searching for firewood and generally anything else that I thought may be useful. My camp was a tarp between two trees, under the tarp was a tent, 
In front of the tent was a stone circle I had been using to build fires within. A small chest with items in it, and some other miscellaneous belongings laid around in an orderly manner. Everything was camouflaged or hidden within camouflage cover slash the land. The shelter also had dead branches and leaves resting over it. It would have been very difficult to find me, even if you were looking for me as a squad. The exact piece of land was incredibly awkward to get to, couldn't be seen even from uphill. It was a wonderful spot and makes it all the scarier that they found me. Not gonna agree text because I'm bad at it. Peak Mimifla lockdown I got stir crazy sitting around all day collecting unemployment like a fucking leech, so I decided to head into woods. I live in a deep blue state so I figured my chances of running into anyone out there were slimmer than usual. My intention was to camp out for a week or so and relax, hike around, do anything but sit inside all day like everyone else in the state. I drove 3 hours to my favorite national forest, up an old logging road. I took my M1 carbine, pick related, different trip, and Remington 870 Magnum. The drive up was really nice since there was no one on the road and gas was super cheap. I got there in record time. I set up camp around an hour off the main road. I wasn't exactly super deep, but I was deep enough in a woods to be satisfied. The first night was normal. The second night, I woke up at around 2 a.m. to silence, and then what sounded like a blood-curdling shriek, which my rational brain told me was a mountain lion about two seconds later. It must have screamed before and woken me up. I listened intently for a few minutes but didn't hear it again and fell back asleep. The next day was weird. The forest was silent. Previously there had been birds singing, bugs chirping, wind in the trees, etc. Now everything was just still and silent in the cold morning air. I just got some coffee started and tried not to think about it. Eventually the day warmed up, and yet the sound didn't return. I started to think maybe that mountain lion was still in the area. Woods tend to go silent when there's a predator nearby. But that didn't explain the complete lack of wind. The air felt as stagnant as a hot car, except it was 40 degrees out. I decided to have a look around. I hadn't gone more than half a mile in any direction away from camp since I'd gotten there. I threw on a jacket and my Alice LBE I had rigged with M1 carbine mag pouches that kinda worked. I went in the direction I remembered the noise coming from the previous night, hiking cross country. The woods were silent the whole way. Hell, I didn't even hear any airplanes fly overhead, and this was a pretty high traffic area. I hiked across a largish clearing with scattered groups of trees when I noticed something odd. A couple of the pines were missing all of their limbs. They weren't charred from a wildfire, but looked as though they'd been torn off. They stood around 20 yards apart, jutting skyward, almost like a gate. I thought it was weird, but chalked it up to loggers or something. When I crossed the gate, it was like a switch was flicked. I was suddenly hit with a wall of anxiety, the kind I hadn't felt since I was a teenager. I felt the adrenaline rush of someone being mocked. My knees threatened to buckle and I felt cold sweat run down the hollow of my back. I was shocked and confused at my reaction, but took a moment to collect myself before advancing, unslinging my rifle and keeping it in the low ready, mostly to bring myself comfort. I wouldn't walk 30 more yards before coming across a deer carcass that had been absolutely eviscerated. It looked like it had been hit by a truck then run over by a whole convoy, except it was in the middle of the forest nowhere near a road. The area reeked of death. I decided it was time to head back to camp. I figured I'd confirmed the presence of a cougar and considered moving camp. Getting tired, gonna give the abridged ending and wrap it up so I can go to bed. I made my way back to camp a little more quickly than I had left, scanning my surroundings, far more alert than before. I knew I was being irrational but I couldn't help but feel a bit scared. Everything was adding up to spell something weird. First the complete lack of noise, that was still present, or rather not present, then the trees, then the strange anxiety, and now the mutilated deer? I was creeped out. Something wasn't quite right. As I crested a ridge, I was greeted with a sight that sent a spike of adrenaline through my system. Another deer carcass. Right where I had hiked through before. I was sure this wasn't here before. This one looked as bad as the last, with the sickening addition of one of its antlers speared through its eye socket. I decided right there that I'd be cutting my trip short. I hauled us back to camp, threw down everything as quickly as possible, made my way down the shitty logging roads as quickly as I could without fucking my suspension up, and left. I'm still not really sure what was going on there. I'm not gonna pull that bullshit you always see on here and say I'm not a believer in the paranormal because that's bullshit. I totally am. But I like to exhaust my rational explanations first. 
I really want to believe it was just a mountain lion, and I just didn't notice the second carcass somehow, but it just doesn't make sense. But would calling it a skinwalker be a reach? I've been on this board too long and read too many nope threats, am I just overthinking it? I guess I'll never know, but it hasn't stopped me from going back to that same forest to fuck around in the woods, just never alone anymore. Sorry, left for work. Go hiking with my dad and my soon-to-be brother-in-law. Pretty remote area near a mountain pass. Start hiking, ours is the only car parked there. Route is pretty hard, steep and full of rock areas. Smell like metal from time to time, not sure if related, same smell as when you smell house keys. Stop to have a snack. Route is 6 hours long, we're pretty much halfway done. Start walking again. Thick fog starts coming down the mountains and descending towards us. Decide to call it quits BC we don't want to be one of those retarded hikers that need rescue. Hear screams. Not actual screams it sounds like a mix between a man screaming and a truck horn, I wouldn't know how to describe it better. Stop and look at each other. Brother-in-law, who is a bit ahead is looking towards a rock formation about 50 meters behind me. Tall man standing on a rock, looks like he's all dressed in a brilliant black coat. Standing as if when a goat stands on an almost vertical rock, but makes no sense in this case. Kinda looks like he doesn't have a neck. Opens his mouth and same scream slash horn again. We're shocked, don't know what to make out from this. Screams again and slowly starts raising his arm pointing at something on a rock next to him. GTFO and start coming back. We heard the same noise a few times, sometimes from behind, sometimes coming from right next to us, sometimes in front of us. Might be the sound echoing, but I have the feeling whatever it is it's following us at incredible speed. Like we're almost sprinting down the mountain and it sounds like he's outrunning us. Get back to the car in record time. Look back one last time. Can make out a couple of dark shades moving at the top of the mountain, but I'm not sure if I'm imagining things, might be just trees. So WTF was that. Post any questions you might need answers to to get more info. Body of Johanna Driscoll, Plate Cove, Bonavista Bay, missing for four years was found near the garden where she lived. Remarkable feature is that the body was in a remarkable state of preservation. Pick related. I have a really bizarre slash creepy story that's passed down in my family regarding a relative who went missing and died under mysterious circumstances a century ago. It briefly made the news when it happened, but as far as I can research, the news barely goes into depth about it beyond, woman goes missing, turns up dead in her garden four years later. So instead, this story is passed down in the family. 1917, in Plate Cove, very rural and undeveloped part of Newfoundland, Canada. Old relative goes missing for four years. She apparently was heavily superstitious, believed in cryptids, fairies, demons, and other things, was heavily into various European folklore. She's described as having all of these weird mannerisms, routines, and daily rituals to protect her and her family and pay respect to the fairies. Not only did she believe in them, she apparently claimed she would encounter fairies in the forest. Family generally considered her a lunatic. Her disappearance was apparently a big deal at the time. There was a massive operation to find her. People from the town and neighboring communities were involved. Nobody found her. Search was called off. Four years later, her body is found in her garden in pristine condition, like she had only been dead for a day. She was wearing her dress, which looked completely normal and not worn down. There were no injuries or signs of any trauma on her body. She was resting on her back, with her arms gracefully crossed on her chest. Nobody knows what the fuck happened to her. Police just spitball a theory that she was either abducted or ran away, died, and returned to her house by a third party. Family insists that something paranormal happened to her, claiming that she was spirited away by fairies. Today, the family and locals in her town call her the Fairy Lady. Be 
biologist. Be doing biologist shit. Buddies are setting camp traps on trees while I'm at camp trying to get a fire going. Fire won't catch. Bill sits next to me. Feels cold, but since everything was cold never cared about it. This fucking lint won't make a spark, shitty fuck equipment, where's Sam with the lighter? Keep complaining for a while. Realize the person next to me isn't talking. Feel a slight chill creeping up my spine. Slowly look ahead. Can see Sam's and Bill's flashlights in the woods ahead. Who the fuck is sitting next to me? Turn around, all I see is something black. No. No. Wake up next day. Sam and Bill are standing on top of me, white as milk. I'm laying in the middle of the ground a little bit away from the camp. They said they heard screaming and when they came I was nowhere to be seen. Where were you when this happened? F.T. Campbell, Tennessee. Had spent the whole night looking for me, shouting, yelling, all they got in response was a deep grunt. Try to get up, pain everywhere. MFW this is what I looked like when they tore my shirt off. MFW I had torn both my pectoralis, as if trying to push slash fight something away, to the point where the muscle tore, and broken five ribs and a clavique. MFW I'm never doing field trip work again. MFW every night I nope at the slightest feel of something brushing against me. This figure was captured on video in the same area by YouTube user James Jones. I named it Horned Man but it could be just a bunch of trees. Now that you told your story it made me think of it. Coincidence. Or do we have a real thing here? If it was a bear you wouldn't be here to post that story, just saying. Seven years. I walked a hundred miles through these woods. I've never seen that shape before, right there. See it. It's got a funny head shape. It wasn't here earlier. Yeah, no, it's not a stump. It's not. Like it's connected right there, but it's not. I've been over there a thousand times. It's weird. Yeah. I look some door. Hey, Stalker. Hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you, give a like and a sub, it really helps the cause. And since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.